Welcome, I'm Kate. Ad-free versions and subtitles are available. <sighs> yeah, well, learn the lesson. Never rely on footage for labeling and do proper backups. Yeah, do proper backups. That's the lesson we're going to learn here. I don't know what's in this bed. I have no clue. 138. Bad Weather Garden Tour. October 28, 2024. It really isn't pretty here right now, but that's okay. That's okay. Let's start in the greenhouse. One thing you now won't get to see is that I moved a lot of the peppers in here. So let's start on this side over here. We've got still that big brassica. I still don't know what it is, but... By now, I'm sure it's not kale. So that's something we're going to get a cauliflower broccoli. I don't know anything about brassica. We're going to see. I'm just going to let it go and see where it leads. I mean, once it flowers, I'll know what it is. Um, I've got this ginormous nasturtium. Let me turn around the camera for that one. It starts over here. Grows past the brassica. And then all the way over here through all of that shelving. And by now, it's reached over here as well. And it's everywhere. Okay, anyway, chilies. I moved in the chilies. This one still has one on it that I'm hoping will come to full color. It's not looking too nice, but it's fine. Uh, same thing here. I've got two, three more fruit on there that I hope to ripen on the, on the uh, plant, but we'll see how that goes. I've planted lettuce here. We'll see if any of it sprouts. I just did that the other day. And then here we've got Lucy. This is Lucy. It's a variety called Lila Lucy, so purple Lucy. Um, and it's doing really well. After transplanting, it put on new flowers and new fruit, and the fruit that are on there are ripening, so I'm very happy with that. This one I can take home today. That's really cool. Then we've got this one down here, the little one. And two more. One here. And then this one back here. I had such nice footage of putting all the straw everywhere and ah, it's a pity. I really, really, really am a little bit pissed. Okay, I'm a lot pissed that I lost all the footage because there was some really, really nice stuff in there. And now that's just not going to be there, but it's okay. It's fine. It's just footage. It's just technology. It's okay. Okay, let's have a look at the rest of the garden. First, we've got the corn salad here. There, it's looking really good. I'm very happy with it. We're going to see. It's Pepper's favorite spot. I don't know why there, but he keeps hanging out right there looking at the street. I don't know what. But anyway, um, the mulch material on the right here is one of the ones that's supposed to stay over winter. So I'm hoping that'll work out. And if not, we're going to deal with it. But this one's supposed to survive the frost. As opposed to... as opposed to this one, which is supposed to die as soon as we get some frost. And this has grown a lot. This uh, not frost hardy, it's called fast ground cover and really is fast ground cover. I'm a big fan of it and I'm definitely going to do that again next year. In between, whenever I have some bed empty that needs to be filled, this stuff seems to be working really well. It's going to die soon with the first frost and I'm really curious to see how that's going to work. Behind it, we still got the salsify. Let me take you over and... It's looking really good. I'm very happy with that. It's looking lush. We're gonna start digging up the first ones soon just to see how they look, but they should be fine from like now to end of January. So we're gonna see. Okay, I dug up all the carrots, which you're also now not gonna see. I'm so sad about that. Uh, anyway, yes, I dug up our carrot harvest except for the last few rows. I have two rows left from each variety. Actually, I think I have one row left from each variety, but it's fine. It's just here 
We have two rows of carrots, one from the Oxhella and one from the Trinitala. I think they were Trinitala, but I don't know. Um, I left those in, but I harvested all the rest. So all of this dug up. I left the last ones in because I was very happy with what the carrots did in the garden. So I want them to go to seed next year. So I'm leaving some of them in to harvest a little bit later just to see how sweet they are after the first frost because I've heard that carrots are sweeter after the first frost. So I want to try that. But I'm also going to leave some of the carrots there to make seed next year so we can save the seed. Okay, wheat field. And obviously there's another dandelion in it yet again. But this is our winter wheat and the hopefully spring potatoes. We're going to see about that. That's the experiment we did. Okay, let's walk over here. Okay, right there we've got spinach, verdil, which is doing really great. I harvested a lot of that. There was beautiful footage of me harvesting that in the sunset that I'm again very sorry to have lost, but we're going to deal with it. The brassica are doing really well. And what's cool is I put in some beans back here that are overwintering beans. So we're going to see how that goes. Same here, everywhere there was the gap. I put in some overwintering beans just to get more nitrogen into the soil. The chart and beets are looking really good and I'm probably going to harvest those very soon. The beets are looking really good, so we're probably going to harvest that. The second variety of spinach is a little behind the first one. I It's firstly because I planted it later, but it's also a smaller variety, a more slow growing variety. But that too is looking really, really good. The corn is gone. Um, we got one cob. I have a photo of that. I'm going to put that somewhere. Um, but yeah, I have one cob of corn and it was only even half a cob, but there's enough seed on it to try again next year. And in the meantime, the corn plants are just sad little stalks over here. All the leaves went to the neighbor's chickens. So yeah, they went to good food uses and now it's just not looking very good. But in general, I put out a lot of mulch. The new garden neighbors in that direction donated all of their grass clippings from the initial mowing of their new lawn. And now we've got the tomato bed all covered and it's all looking good. I've started making new beds. I'm going to show you in a second. But let's start with the tomato bed. The tomato bed is now covered in this grass clipping mulch. We'll now have to get another giant pile of grass clippings at some point because it was so cool to see how it hot composted within a couple of hours from them dropping it off the next day. It was on the inside, very, very uncomfortable to the touch. It got really, really hot and I was super fascinated and took a lot of video of it, but I'll show you next time. I'm sure we're going to get another pile of grass clippings at some point and we're going to figure that out. I've started a new bed over here. For orientation, that's the entrance from the other plot. So right next to it, I've started a new bed because I had some grass clippings left. It's going to go all the way back here next to where the beans were this year. Okay, what else? Oh yeah, right, beautiful flowers. We finally figured out what these are and I'm going to put it on the screen because I only know the German name because I looked it up with a German garden neighbor. But this whole bush started blossoming and isn't it pretty? I really am a big fan of this. It's very late in the season. It's almost November. We've been close to frost a couple of times and this thing is filled with flowers. Okay, yeah, right. Um, this bed too has a lot of beans on it. If we look down here, there's beans all over this because I just, whenever I found a gap and I didn't know what else to put there, I just put on either a green manure ground cover or I put on those beans because I got a ginormous bag of the beans. So I'm not really in a shortage of bean seeds. So I just put those everywhere and they are supposed to last the winter. So yeah, 
are very hopeful. I also started mulching this bed. I didn't quite finish because despite the ginormous pile, I managed to run out of grass clippings. Winter legumes over there and then here more of those overwintering beans and they grow in between everywhere here. I've started putting grass clippings on the path as well because I want to cover that entire area. And then more grass clippings here. I've separated those two beds. Those were that one big U-shaped bed earlier. Now there's two of them. And I know this part doesn't exactly look like a path right now, but we're just going to deal with that. That's because I put ground cover down before I decided where the beds put would be. So right now we've got ground cover on the path, but it's okay. And it's the kind that goes away with the first frost anyway, so it's just going to be dead very soon. It's totally fine. I took down all of the rest of the sunflowers. All of that is cleaned up and I've still got a few dates with my compost because the compost pile is ginormous right now. That's a very, very big compost pile over there. And most of it needs to be turned before it starts growing again because it's either grass or clippings from things that have seeds. So we need to hot compost this and that means turning it a couple of times. Both the black bins are full, so those need to be turned and moved and figured out what to do with as well. So yeah, couple dates with the compost ahead of me. Right now, I'm very glad that I didn't get around to it yet because that means I have something I can do and show you you instead of all the footage we lost. So there are good things about delays sometimes. Look at all those mushrooms. I mean, seriously, they are everywhere. On the neighbor's plot over there as well. Everywhere around here. There's mushrooms. And they go all the way. Isn't that cool? Okay, what else? Here, right, we still have something in this bed. In here we've still got horseradish. And if we have a look, you can see that it's getting quite thick down there. So I'm very hopeful that these will turn out well. We're just gonna leave them in for a while longer. I dug up the strawberries. So right here, we've got strawberries and straw. There's a lot of them everywhere here. And I do have to do some cleanup here, but we're gonna deal with that at some point. For now, there's strawberries and there's straw. So we're going to see how that goes. They are from the neighbor's greenhouse. So I dug them up over there and then planted them here next to high paper. Next to the potato bed where we're storing the potatoes, which is filled with dandelions. And I'm going to have to figure out what to do with that. But there's also over here a lot more strawberries. So even if the potatoes fail, I think we can turn this into a strawberry bed. We're gonna see. Over here, look at that. We've got actual growth on one of these branches over there. And I, I'm gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna leave them there over winter and see what happens. Um, if it works out, there's wine in there. There is all colors of currant that I have. So white currant, red currant, and black currant in there. I also got some gooseberries from the other plot over there and have branches in here. So just wish me luck that some of them grow into actual fruit trees because, or berry trees, because bushes, berry bushes, fruit trees, whatever, you know what I mean. Uh, one of those that they grow into something really edible because I want to grow a food forest and I can get a head start on that now. So I'm going to see how many little fruiting trees and bushes I can get going in spring. We're going to see how that goes. So we're going to learn how to propagate fruit trees and berry bushes.
I told you I had a lot of grass clippings. This one's now a good thick layer of grass clippings. We're just going to use this one as an experiment to see how we're going to make a bed without planting anything in winter because I don't want to plant more ground cover. This one's just going to lie like that. We're going to keep adding mulch just to see how that develops the soil over winter because the best things obviously roots in the ground like we're going to do over here. Those are just going to stay in the ground and then in spring we're going to mow it over and that's going to be it and over on this side we're not going to do that we're just going to leave it empty and see what happens and that's mostly for science i know it's not a scientific experiment or anything but i want to try it i want to see how it works and that's something i also did when i planted the garlic and onions we've got different beds over here that i'm going to show you in a second but some of them are no dig some of them i have weeded in a certain way so i'm just going to Try it out and see how it all works. And yeah, let me show you. Okay, let's actually start on the ultra wide angle that I rarely ever use, just so you can see all of them at once. Okay, that's better. Okay, so we've got beds over here. Those are garlic beds. There's a labeling rock over there. We're gonna find out. This over here is snowball onions. So I apparently planted, planted snowball onions under there. Then we've got garlic here with some chives volunteers. And there's the label. It's Germidor in this direction and Messy Drome in this bed. And back here we've got a mixed garlic bed. It's just whatever I had left. This bed I planted field beans in, so this is just overwintering field beans. Once the beans pop up, I'll mulch the rest of the bed. That's another kind of onion that I don't know the name of and I can't read my handwriting. It's something with an S. We're going to put it on the screen. I'm going to figure that out. And then what else do we have here? That's the red winter onion in this bed. This bed is one of those experiments. I did some of it no dig. I put down cardboard and I put on soil from um, plants that we had at home that were getting repotted. So we had some leftover soils there and I put that on. I planted on the cardboard and into that soil. So I had a little no dig patch here. And then I used the exact same onion mixture and the exact same mulch on top, same location, same everything. But I didn't do it no dig. I just did the thing that I usually do where I weed the top surface and then plant in the ground, but don't actually till anything or turn anything. I'm as minimally invasive as possible, but it's still not no dig because yeah, I'm still planting in the ground and no dig would imply no digging, which I think most no dig operations actually aren't. Under pepper, we've got more of those winter field beans and these have actually sprouted. You can see right there is one of them and there's a few in the bed back here we've got more garlic i think but i hope there's a label somewhere <clears throat> i think i was relying on my footage for this bed to figure out what was in it which is a bit unfortunate because the footage is gone i don't know what's in this bed there's no label um I can't even tell you if it's onion or garlic. I guess we're going to figure that out next year. So much for having the entire garden labeled properly next year. <sighs> yeah, well, learn the lesson. Never rely on footage for labeling and do proper back backups. Yeah, do proper backups. That's the lesson we're going to learn here. I don't know what's in this bed. I have no clue. So I've got these four rows of beds and over there where I've got the tarp that's just lying around annoyingly there, we're going to do a fifth one and even a sixth one, but I didn't want to take down the 
plants over there yet because we want insects to overwinter in there. And that's actually something really important. Don't clean up your garden now. I know it looks a lot neater to not have all those bushes and all those dying plants and whatever this is, I don't even know, but it's going to stay in all the areas where it can let it stay over winter. Those things are going to stay over winter so that the insects can overwinter in those plants because that's where they stay. If you want to give next year's pollinators leg up leave your dirty bushes and dirty little shrubs and all that around and clean them up in spring after it's thought enough that they can find other places that they're strong enough and warm enough to find other places speaking of finding places that are warm enough pepper is requesting entrance to the warmer greenhouse which actually brings us full circle to where we started because we're now back in the greenhouse and I think I've showed you the entire garden. And it's so sad that I've lost all that footage, but I'm trying to be upbeat about it. We're just going to do that little video series where I show you how certain things worked out in the garden with review footage. We're going to do that one day of footage I still have. I'm going to start filming more footage, obviously, so it's it's gonna we're going to figure it out. There's going to be the big review video for the first season of the new plot. I have some footage. It's just very annoying that I lost about eight episodes worth of footage and have to scramble now. Yes, Pepper, it's okay. But it's fine. It's just footage. We're going to be fine. I'm going to head home now and do the things I was actually supposed to do today before I headed here to film this video and get all those done because it is getting late and we just changed uh, our clocks. We just shifted the clocks to winter time and yeah, it's getting dark very early now. So long and thanks for being here. If you want to help me make these videos, especially in trying times like these, I really, I was so close to giving up, but I really, I enjoy sharing all this with you. Let me give you a nice overview. Yes, Pepper. I enjoy making these videos too much to quit, so I'm not going to quit. I'm here to stay, but that means I need your help to make these videos. So anything you can do, I'm going to put it all at the end of the video. So long and thanks for being here. Bye. If you want to help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com slash support. Prefer reading? Buy my novels to support me instead.